Hey, welcome back everybody to www.itvideocoach.com. This is a part three of an eight part series on Exchange Server 2007. In this series, we're demonstrating LCR replication using mount points. Specifically in part three, we're looking at the creation of storage groups with mount points. You can find all my videos under YouTube tag Grizzamore, that's G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. And for high quality downloads, make sure you go to www itvideocoach.com. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Bill Grismore with itvideocoach.com. You can also find me on YouTube at G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. That's my YouTube tag, Grismore. Uh, also, itvideocoach.com has got high quality, downloadable, for free videos you can take a look at anytime you want. So be sure to check it out. This is part three of an eight-part series for Exchange Server 2007, how to set up and enable LCR, okay? I try to cut it up into a lot of little pieces so you can just look at the component you want to look at. However, it would be important to go back and make sure you look at part one, part two, part three in order as you kind of go through this video series. So just keep that in mind, all right? So this is part three. We're going to look at how to create storage groups and use the... Uh, mount points that we've already created. So in the previous video, just to kind of pick up where we left off, we have these uh, mount points that have already been created. So now we're going to go into the Exchange Management Console. I have a storage group mount point for the live storage group 3 that I'm going to create. And I have another mount point for the copy I'm going to create. So I have two mount points, one for the original data and then one for the LCR copy. So we go into the Exchange Management Console. Of course, all this stuff can be done from the commandlet, Exchange PowerShell. You don't have to use the GUI if you need to script it or automate it. There's always everything that you can do here in the GUI can all be done uh, from the Exchange PowerShell, which is something that is very uh, useful. So you can always take a look at that. Any commands that are available, we'll take a quick look at them and how to use that in the PowerShell as well. So, uh, so here we have our mailbox and we have two storage groups. So with these mount points already created, we can go ahead and create a brand new uh, storage group. Now, just keep in mind that, again, you do not have to use uh, mount points to do this, okay? Uh, you could use complete drive paths if you wanted to. Mount points are the Microsoft recommended method, and it is the best way to configure LCR. So I'm going to show you a couple things. In the very last part of this, on part eight, I'm going to show you how to enable LCR on an active storage group, which you can do right here. But for now, I'm going to create a brand new storage group, okay? And we're going to enable LCR from scratch on a brand new storage group, okay? So the storage group name is storage group three. And we're going to point the log files and system files path, right, out to the original copy that we have here for our storage group, or the original mount point, I should say. So we have two mount points. We're going to use the original one, which is storage group three. That's a mount point. Also, I named the volume the same name, just to make it consistent. Don't get confused between the storage group name, the mount point name, and the volume name. They're all the same name, but each one is different. That's the storage group. This is the mount point, and the volume has the same name. And we're going to point to the log file path as well. So we're going to go down here and point to storage group 3 for the log file path and the system file path. And then the LCR path is not available yet because we got to check this little checkbox. And then we can now browse to the path that we want to use for the LCR copy. So you can see that a little bit of planning can go a long way in getting this set up right. So we're going to pick to the mount point, the LCR copy. Again, that is a mount point. That is not a volume. Now the volume that it points to has the exact same name. Uh, don't let that confuse you at all. It's just a way to kind of keep things straight. So that is the LCR copy there. So we're going to do the same thing for the system file path and log path here. Now, once we go to create the database, then we'll be prompted for the path to the database as well. Uh, one thing to always kind of think of, whenever you think of storage group, think log files. They kind of go together. Uh, storage group, log files. You know, they're, they're built all at the same time. And then you place your database in your storage group. Okay? 
So the storage group has been completed and we can see the path here. We can do the same exact thing from the exchange management shell and use this syntax. You can even copy it. You can keep this. You can put it in a little text document. You can use it for future creation if you need to automate it. Even create a PowerShell script out of it. Okay, so we have our storage group uh, and we have the storage group created but we don't have a database in there yet so we're going to go down here and make sure we create a brand new mailbox database. Okay, We could uh, do it here. We could also click here, new mailbox database and of course from the PowerShell we could always create a brand new uh, database. So the name of the database, we'll call it We'll just call it database three because it's in storage group three. And then here's our path option. So we're going to point to storage group three. We can see that that's already been selected for us there. That is our mount point once again for the database. And notice the extension is added for us automatically. And then the LCR copy, we just point to the other mount point, which is here. Okay. So there we go. So we have the actual live copy in storage group three, and we have the second copy in the LCR copy. This is the actual name of the database. This is the mount point. This is the mount point pointing to the actual volume. And you can see we're going to mount this database as soon as we're done. And you can see again from the exchange management shell, we have all the options for the configuration of using uh, the commandlet to create the database uh, in both places, the new database and then the mounted copy. You can actually see the difference there uh, with that new versus mounted database. Okay, And we can look at some things in the interface here to kind of show us what's going on. If you look closely, there are quite a few options here in the MMC 3.0. You can kind of slide some of these over a little bit and you can see a little bit more what's going on. Uh, we want to see that the status is mounted, which is good. And we'll notice that the only database that has a copy status of healthy is the actual LCR copy. So we have successfully completed creating a storage group and using our mount points, a source and a target to build the original copy and the target copy is mounted and it's healthy. Okay, so that completes part three. Now in part four, we're going to test Mailflow. We're going to create a, two user accounts. We'll put mailboxes in that database, and we're going to make sure that we can actually send messages in the database just to make sure that it's working. So make sure you come back and, and stay tuned and take a look at uh, part four. Okay? We'll be right back.